Welcome back. Two back-to-back -back fires two weeks ago destroyed the main building at West Hartford's 100-year-old Wampanoag Country Club. One fire ignited early Saturday morning and appeared to have been fully extinguished. But then early Sunday morning, almost exactly 24 hours later, a larger fire consumed the clubhouse, which was slated to be the site of a number of upcoming events. Glenn, Cun Glenn Cunningham serves as the president of the Wampanoag Country Club. He's joining me here in Studio A. Welcome. Thank you very much, Eric. I Good guess to you, be here. You've been a busy man lately. I have indeed. Let's start with these fires. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, we saw it, and, and people who know that, you know, that structure and that spot, it's, a, it's an icon up in that part of West Hartford. It is. Thank you. They saw that first fire, and they thought, oh, geez, Wampanoag. And then the next morning, I mean, I know I turned on our news and said, holy sure. moly, that, there's another one. Right. Tell me about those couple days for you. Well, my experience was very similar to yours, Eric. On Saturday morning, I received a call that there had been a fire overnight, so rushed over to the scene and it seemed like things were under control. You know, the fire was out and we were already into the mode of how do we restore? How do we get amenities back to the members? How do we take care of um, any events that were supposed to happen as early as later that evening? So we were working on all of that. By the end of the day, we were already ready to get golf operations up and running on Sunday morning. The last thing I saw were sanitation facilities coming in so people had a place to use the restroom on Sunday. Um, and then I left. Sunday morning, got another phone call very early saying you need to get over here right away. Um, so that's what we found out. And we, we alluded to it in our intro, but the, 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 fire, the second fire was devastating. Yes, yeah, the first one, you know, it seemed to be contained to the, um, the outdoor area of the club, but obviously we have no idea what the extent of the damage was yet because it was so early. Uh, but yes, when we came back the second day, obviously devastated, could be a total loss. We're still assessing. And as you've been saying that, our viewers have been looking at these pictures. If you want to look at the monitor, these drone pictures yeah, showing, it's heartbreaking. showing what's heartbreaking. left there. Well, tell yeah. me, that's part of it. It's because yeah. obviously, and I want to talk about what's happening sure. with events that were scheduled because mm -hmm. I know that was my first thought was, oh gosh, what if someone has a wedding or a prom? Yeah. Or, and they did. Um, yeah. But tell me about just there's a lot of people who have memories from inside that building that's now burned down. Well, that's just it. If you can believe it, Eric, we were celebrating and are celebrating our centennial year. Wampanoag Country Club was founded in 1924, and so Sunday was supposed to be opening day for golf and really the beginning of our full year centennial celebrations. So there was a lot going on. It's not just about the members and about the staff. We've been a part of the community for that 100 years, and so there are so many people who have memories from literally baptisms, to bat mitzvahs, to communions, to weddings, to end of life ceremonies. And throughout the weekend and frankly all the way through now, you can see people coming up Wampanoag Drive and they start getting misty eyed just thinking about all the wonderful life events that they've had inside that building. And I think that's part of, of this is, is if our viewers are maybe from a different part of Connecticut and saying, oh, who cares, a bunch of golfers, you know, can't go right. in and have a beer after their round. Right. But it's more than that because of that, that community aspect of it. And I know you had a lot of events that were still to come. So yeah. what's happening with that? Yeah, so a few things. So if you can imagine, Eric, that night, Saturday night, the night of the first party, the Watkinson School Junior Prom was scheduled. And at 10 a.m. that morning, the prom committee was supposed to be on site, do the decorations, the balloons, all the things you can imagine. And of course, they saw the news coverage on Saturday morning, reached out to our events director, Beth Georgia, who is an absolute saint, uh, and said, what are we going to do? And there was never any consideration of canceling that prom. It went into where do we go mode. And that's where the outpouring of help from the surrounding community has just been so heartwarming and helpful. What happened on Saturday with Watkinson is Hot Meadow Country Club up in Simsbury. We reached out to them, said, do you happen to have any space available for tonight? They said, we know what's going on. Absolutely, you can have our space. Only problem is it's early in the season. We don't have all of our staff here yet. We mobilized our staff, got them up to Simsbury. The parents and the students from Watkinson came up, got the place ready, and they had apparently a wonderful prom. And uh, I'm thrilled I'm going to go over there next week because they, they want to say thank you to us, which I can't imagine. We want to say thank you to them sure. for, for adjusting to all of that. And what about future events? I mean, I know you've yeah. sure been talking to the people, but just for our viewers who aren't involved, what's sure. going to be happening with those? Yeah, so you sort of look at them in, in two buckets, right? There are, there are the golf-related ones, which I can come back to, and then there's the non-golf-related ones, weddings, for example. So we had two weddings that were on the schedule for the summer. We've been able to relocate both of those. And the same go for everything, like I said, from uh, christenings, bat mitzvahs, and the like. So we're, and community events, you know, business events that come and, and hold their events there. We've been able to transition all of those, at least for the month of May. Um, and then we'll see as we get temporary facilities on site what we can do during the rest of the summer. In terms of golf operations, we are 100% open and running for golf operations. And every event that we had over the course of the summer scheduled has affirmed that they will be there, including, and this is very exciting news for us, 
Titleist, the equipment manufacturer, I know you play some golf, so you know Titleist, um, they're going to come and do a professional photo shoot on property over the course of the summer for some of their equipment. They confirmed and said, we love the property, we're coming, don't worry about the fire, we're there. So we're very, very excited about that. We'll have some Titleist pros on campus, it's gonna be terrific. I've been at your course and hit Titleist balls right into the water at your <laughs> that's course. That's it, you got it. Yeah, what about people who were planning summer jobs with you? Yeah. Uh, is that something that's still in flux? That is in flux. So right now what we're trying to do is understand what amenities can we offer to the members and to the community over the course of the summer. Once we know that, then we can backfill and say, what kind of staffing do we need for the rest of the summer? Of course, there's a priority on our full timers. We want to make sure that they're fully employed. What we have said to the summer staff, because of course we have people coming back from college who we were counting on, um, is that we're not sure yet. We completely understand if you want to go and find something else, we get it. Um, but otherwise, we'll let you know, hopefully in the next couple of weeks, what the situation is going to be. A little bit less than a minute left, but I just yeah. want you to talk a little bit about that history. You're celebrating 100 yeah. years. Was there a lot of it lost in that building? What about like the personal property inside? Yeah, great question. So if we talk about some of the historic artifacts for Wampanoag, it was built by Donald Ross back in 1924, the iconic golf course architect. We had the original blueprints of Donald Ross in our locker room facility. I said to Chief Priest from the West Hartford Fire Department, Chief, only if it's safe, but if you could do us one favor, if you could find those historic artifacts and pull them out, that would mean a lot to the membership. And would you know, Chief Priest and, and the team were able to do that for us. So we saved all of those Donald Ross prints. Other stuff we're assessing, things like golf clubs and bags and shoes and whatnot. We're working our way through that but it meant so much to so many that we were able to hold on to those blueprints that were done by Donald Ross himself. Well, listen, uh, you are a very busy man these days yeah. trying to figure all this out. We appreciate you giving us a few minutes of your time, and uh, we hope you get back on your feet uh, with the uh, uh, events, and I'm glad to hear that golf is already uh, in full swing. So Thanks so much. Thanks Eric. for being with us, Glenn Cunningham. Thank you. Really appreciate it.